Six Guidelines for Wealthy People That Poor People Never Learn What's up guys? Today, we'll discuss six key principles that, in many cases, wealthy and successful people used to build their success and how you might apply them to your own life. If you enjoy watching videos about business, money, and motivation, subscribe now and click the bell icon to never miss a video again. First, the wealthy act swiftly, but alter their decisions gradually. Have you ever experienced this situation? Let's say you go to a fast food restaurant and there is a line. It takes a little while to get to the front. After waiting for 10 minutes, the person in front of you is still unsure of their order. The majority of people have a tendency to make judgments slowly and modify them quickly, which is a significant contrast between highly successful people and the typical person. Therefore, it can be challenging to stick with a choice over the long run because the majority of people feel unsure and confused about their choices. The wealthy and successful frequently commit to their decisions right away and do so with confidence. See, many people have numerous ideas for prospective side jobs, businesses, or even personal projects, but they are unable to choose which one to start with, wasting valuable time in the process. When they do agree to begin that project, they quickly become demotivated and decide against it. High achievers, however, swiftly select a course of action that feels right to them or is met with the least amount of opposition. Stay with it until it succeeds or until it fails and they must change their strategy. Which brings me to my next point. Second, faulty execution. You have a brilliant business concept or a brand new project in mind and you have resolved to carry it out alone but you haven't yet. Perhaps though it has been months or even years, you are still figuring out the specifics of your execution. Even after reading the books, attending the classes and making mental plans, you still haven't actually done anything about it. See, the majority of folks just complete the planning phase. When someone has a great idea, they read about study and plan all the different ways they can implement it. They keep learning, starting and planning until they get too overwhelmed by the choices and the amount of information they have absorbed. In the end, their plan is never realized. However, have you ever observed that a quality that a lot of successful people possess is that they act quickly? Sometimes before one is even prepared. See? We may learn from those who have achieved great success that sometimes it is better to start, make mistakes, and then change than to have a perfect plan. We wouldn't have an iPhone today if Steve Jobs had insisted on making it flawless before releasing it. After creating the first iPhone, they examined what was successful and what they could do to improve upon it. The iPhone 3G was followed by the iPhone 4, the iPhone 5, the iPhone 6, and so on. See? As you embark on a new undertaking, venture, or even routine, our ideal plan ultimately fails since the experiences we actually have are very different from what we had anticipated. It is quicker to get started, make mistakes, rectify them and alter your strategy as you go than to spend too much time planning. The adage, perfection is paralysis, applies here. You will receive honest feedback as you begin your project, which you can then utilize to fine-tune and improve your method. Something that cannot be obtained by simply sitting and planning. Now, I'm not suggesting you shouldn't research, educate yourself or make plans. The issue is that a lot of individuals postpone action by learning and planning, which is problematic. Overplanning might act as a justification for procrastination. We have more time to consider potential problems as we proceed more slowly. As a result, we develop self-insecurity and fall into the perfection trap. So, there are a few things we can do to counteract this and escape the perfection trap. First, 
fully commit to attaining your goal. This implies that you won't consider any other option. You won't be emotionally invested in how you got there, simply in the result itself. A common mistake is for people to get more focused on the plan than the result, even when the plan isn't working. Be persistent about your destination, not the map. It is simpler to toss away the map when you are focused on the destination rather than the road. Try something different to learn only what you need to get started if the first attempt didn't work. If you're establishing a business by yourself, you don't need to understand all the corporate tax structures or how to foster a great workplace culture. You should learn how to sell your product and how to complete orders if you're just getting started. As soon as you're aware of how to begin, you do so. And 3. To learn and adapt If you're not embarrassed by the first version of your product, you launch too late, according to Reid Huffman. Thus, as your company or project expands, you start using feedback to improve your approach. As your company or project grows, you research and acquire the next thing you need. Question: What can you do to begin working on your upcoming project this week? Third, advertise. The majority of individuals have negative thoughts about selling and advertising themselves. While the wealthy and successful feel proud to do so in order to promote their brand and fulfill their goals. This is an interesting difference between the rich and the typical person. Consider what you have that can improve humanity and other people's lives. Whether it is a wonderful product or innovative technology, music, art, your sense of humor, a talent or experience that can be helpful to others. See, we all possess distinctive abilities, experiences and ideas that have the power to improve the lives of others. But the people who actively market themselves, their concepts and their goods are the ones who actually have an influence. Consider this, if nobody sees your paintings, you might be a brilliant artist, but your talent won't inspire anyone. If you don't share your journey, others won't be able to draw strength from you even if you have a terrific life narrative or experience that can assist them to overcome what they've already faced. Consider it this way if you still have bad feelings towards sales and promotion. There are people who need your abilities, your story and your ideas to improve their lives. Not letting the world know about what you have to offer would be selfish. Fourth, prioritize your own self. The achievement in accumulating riches is a trait shared by all wealthy and successful people. It's a byproduct of who they are as people. It is comparable to the legend of the goose that produced golden eggs. You won't have the golden eggs if you don't take care of the goose. You are responsible for your own success. Thus, it may be challenging to lead a life that is truly successful if you don't take care of yourself. The majority of successful people strive to take care of three essential aspects of life. First, their physical development. Everybody's life revolves around their physical and mental health. Even if you achieve excellent outcomes and success, you won't be as successful if you're not in good health, fit and full of energy. What use is enormous money and success if you can't enjoy it because of your health? Number two is their personal development. If you pay attention, you'll see that almost all wealthy and successful people devote a portion of their time to growing personally. They are always picking up new knowledge that will benefit both their professional and personal lives. They are constantly working to improve themselves because they are aware that they can always do better. Thirdly, their emotional growth. High performers are also humans with feelings, insecurities and emotions, something that is rarely discussed. They all put a lot of effort into improving their mental attitude and emotional health. They are aware that building confidence is a talent that must be developed, along with safeguarding it. 
Do you realize that we cannot lead a truly successful and happy life without attending to our emotional needs? 6. Don't feel bad about wanting to be wealthy See, the majority of us were raised to believe that talking about money or being wealthy made us feel awkward. But in truth, there is nothing wrong with wanting to be wealthy or having money. What is wrong with wanting more money when most people spend their entire lives working for it? The wealthy are not ashamed of their desire for wealth and success. They are clear on their goals and are determined to pursue them. Please let me know which of these ideas most spoke to you and why in the comments section below. I appreciate your support as always, and I'll see you in the next video.